Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your physically extant boyfriend who just loves being physically composed of a corporeal form and, uh, hey, wait, what's that? Who's that distinguished looking gentleman with a chunky, weird, cartoonish, plasticky looking sword? Oh no! Uh, and it's time for the next episode of the Transistor Let's Play. And I have two things to mention. One really quickly is that... My neighbours are having some kind of a party today, so they're quiet at the moment, but they might get suddenly noisy while I'm recording this. Unfortunately, for logistical reasons, I kind of have to record today. Anyway, uh, if there's suddenly noises, that's what that is. Second thing is that I have a Twitter poll at the moment, basically about just whether episodes should be longer, the same, shorter, or whatever. It would be really useful for me to get a bit more data, so please fill that out if you have the time. Anyway, let's dive in. Yeah, it's kind of a mess. White blocks like these. They weren't just trees and houses and things. Yeah. And they weren't just people either. They were the air, the water, the sky. Everything is being rendered into this uh, papery oneness. Uh, there was a thing I have mentioned a few times, actually. Let's Yeah, it's not that they don't like water, it's that their job is to just render everything back into the paste from which it came. It's almost um, an entertainingly literal take on the tabula rasa for such a painterly game. For such a painterly game, I love that the apocalypse is a rendering back into a blank canvas. You know, Red, we made quite a team. We a lady without a voice. Jen without a body. We owe it all to the camerata. And we sure did a number on this town. For all that he's kind of formless now, um, in my mind's eye, the boxer sort of has uh, himbo energy. I don't think I can um, break away from those preconceptions. So, I was going to mention before that um, part of the design intent for this game was that um, Supergiant wanted a game that would. disincentivize people from having a kind of comfort skill. In a lot of these kinds of, you know, arena action brawlery games, especially sort of like turn-based, well, semi-turn-based, skill-based ones, because uh, it shares DNA with like modern action roguelikes, which, well, the taxonomy of the roguelike is uh, another, another discussion for another time, but um, a lot of these kinds of games really do have Anyway, so part of the um, design intents for this game was to force you to improvise and keep changing up your uh, your loadout to work with what you have or to work with your to work with whatever it is you happen to be forced to use in a given space. I think they failed completely in that. I think they ended up building. Um, they really don't like water. It's nice. It's interesting that says that the water is freezing. Um, I like the idea that that's simply that it's not just that they're changing physical objects, they are restoring the like default original state of the universe, ultimate homogeneity, total... Uh... Total entropy, where everything is equal and the same, and kind of just cold and empty nothingness. Anyway, um, I actually feel like the... I'd like to go, if you don't mind. Like, the um, design is sort of almost archetypical uh, supergiant design. I did not unlock the next guy. That is unfortunate. There's not very many fights left in the game, so hopefully I can unlock, unlock at least one more full history. But, um, because you are freely able to remix your skills, their desire to avoid having a comfort skill simply it doesn't work like that. You've been watching me play for a couple weeks now, and I absolutely have comfort skills. It'll all just be little white blocks and some eyeballs. I 
kind of love it when he's uh, all spacey and drunk. Except for us. Except for us. But yeah, you can see that I have used you Crash have like and Breach pretty consistently all the way through the game. The other skills are definitely situationally useful, but none of them really... None of them really ever match the, like, constant, ubiquitous benefit of, um, of these skills. The same with, um, Blink as a means of escaping while on cooldown. It's just too good. So I think it's interesting that they explicitly, in interviews about their design inspirations, have talked about the desire to escape the, the comfort skill paradigm where people play a game like this and they decide which skills they like and they just level up those skills and then they'll play around with the rest. The uh, use of gating the story behind switching which skills you use just encourages people to game the system to get through the things uh, they have as fast as possible so that they can get back to using the skills they do like. So possibly it's not even a meaningful um, problem to solve and I wonder if they decided on that with their uh, with their next game, Pyre, because that's very much back to the classic like upgrade tree system of decide what you like and use it. Although of course it does have, you know, classic Supergiant style twists on the idea in that as you play through that game, you will periodically decide to lose as you know, aspects of your team and things you can things you can do, abilities that you have. So um, I know that Void will provide Asher Kendrell's story. I don't know whose story we'll get with Cull, so I should probably grab Asher Kendrell. That'll probably, that might be the last up, uh, additional spell we get during this run. I'm not certain how much time there is left. Let's do this, why not? Um, don't care about eggs. I don't care about crawlers, which do I appreciate more? Probably the crawlers. <laughs> Actually, let's see what the reasoning behind the uh, ridiculous chickens is. So, I was talking about the kind of like design goals. And the thing. Ab hmm, why is my memory overloading? Well, let's uh, just activate that. User no longer automatically gets a bonus turn at low health. That's fine. That doesn't happen very often anyway. So this design goal, um, I feel like they took another... They kind of gave up on it for the next game and went back to their sort of traditional super giant style. I think I, can I get through there? I'm not sure. Oh, no, I can't. The channel used to be here. Don't even know anymore. Uh, but yeah, so this design goal. Will I ever see you again? I mean, me rambling about design goals face. over the kind of tragic melodrama of these characters and. I like to wonder about that. Like maybe you can get me out of here or something. Then, then we can watch everything. There's only about four het couples in basically all narrative canon in existence that I care about, and Bread and the Boxer is one of them. I'm not sure what they did to get me so invested, but I actually am. This is starting to develop a little bit of an everybody day of situation. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, guy. The... The cool pizza place is shutting down. I mean, guess what? So is all of the rest of society. Oh, not, not the cool bikes place. Yes, the cool bikes place. Not, not the empty set. I was going to perform there next week. Yeah, yeah, the empty set too. Everybody's dead, Dave. Like, it's over. Anyway, Junction Jans is closing its doors. Circumstances beyond our control. Have one last flatbread on the house. I mean, kind of this time around, we have to go for the Supremo Deluxe, which is. I mean, I agree, but hey, at least I get to use my... I mean, that's absolutely going to be my rap name. No, this product is no longer available. 
Your mail will be delivered to your home in forever. So yeah, um, and I haven't played Hades yet because I never actually got around to finishing um, Pyre, Hades being the most recent game released, which is much more roguelike-y, much more actively roguelike-y in that modern roguelike-y mould, which is not a roguelike under my own personal taxonomy, but I can get into that another time. So the thing about that is that, essentially, I'll just trigger this fight because I might as well. Oh, it won't happen yet. Hey, that's not our bike. So uh, I mentioned previously that the process are slowly taking on human characteristics, even as they sort of devour the world and destroy the human, you know, place of existence. What? I kind of feel like that guy was maybe supposed to be more of a challenge. Um, like I said, once you know what you're doing with the skills, you can build builds that just destroy everything. I don't think this game actually even has difficulty levels, which is kind of amusing. Um, anyway, so... What the hell was I talking about? Design goals. I think that, to some extent... Thanks for the lift. Um, they actually did succeed on that design goal with Hades, which um, uses randomised builds, where you build your build randomly on a run and then start over from nothing on the next one. Hi. What I said back then about wanting to see you again, face to face, I want you to know I meant it. deserve some kind of reward. Not to get wiped out like all his bike friends. See you in the country, Mr. Bike. So that cutscene is especially useful because um, it's an obvious reprise of the early cutscene on the motorbike. The one that establishes the stakes for the game that are then undercut and removed and replaced as we slowly come to this horrifying realisation that this is it. There's nothing left. We're kind of like donezo at this point. And that is itself one of the interesting like narrative goals of this. This is a tragedy. It is not going to end well. And we see that in... We see that groundwork laid constantly throughout the game. Both the establishment of this kind of epic plot to defeat the evil guy, and then the realisation that the evil guy was never even relevant. He was gone before you ever got there. And there's nothing you can do about that. And maybe sometimes problems are bigger than you can fix. And unlike the thesis of Mirror's Edge, which is that sometimes problems are bigger than you can fix, but you can still make progress, you can still achieve things. The thesis of this game is sometimes problems are too big to solve and you will succumb to them. Designation, Clucker. This one is rather inconspicuous, even nonchalant, so very timid in its disposition, though its appendages, that is to say its legs, they will need a closer look. Why are they not rigid? Fleshy, almost, appearing natural in shape and texture, it strikes me as very odd. The process, it is big on self-improvement, that I know, but I do not know if copying the way we mill about, the way we wander, I don't know if that qualifies? In any case, this is a newer model and has to be to be able to traverse denser environments undetected and quite literally lead the way for its associates. It is a bit like an explorer. Roll Ranger. Features ballistic launcher, all-terrain locomotion, disruption system. Vulnerabilities, far-sighted rangefinder. Preferences, biped emulation, shooting contests. So, as I mentioned, that is uh, an important cutscene, both to re-establish how the stakes have changed, and to just bring home Supergiant's favourite theme of all, i.e. Uh, that of circularity and cycles. Because... What do these guys love? These guys love cycles, as you can see. Get it? Get it? Because it's a cycle. And it also represents us coming back to where we were at the beginning, at the start of the game. Because it's a cycle. A cycle. Anyway. Um, so, this is one of the rare moments where it actually tells you um, how many enemies you'll be facing in the next area. This is really uncommon. Uh, I think it only happens maybe one other time in the game. I don't remember. But um, 
That is because this is Yikes. Spawning season. Way more than you normally see. I wonder what he was gonna tell me. Oops. I literally always forget that they uh, explode out of the way. <laughs> Am I not supposed to fight these? I reckon I can take them. So, yeah, for all that I was... Um, oh, no. So the main interesting thing here is that uh, you spend most of the game not knowing what fights you run into, so you build a generalist build that can try and solve any particular problem. He seems insistent, but... I mean, I think I'm going to see how far I can make it. I hit those ones as well. Yeah. So, as I was saying, in Hades, it actually does uh, make a strong attempt to solve that same design problem of um, people having their their comfort build that they go for by forcing you to randomise every single different um, attempt. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go. Bye, ladies. So, <laughs> for all that you are encouraged to try and set yourself up to be able to take that fight, you probably can. I don't know what happens if you win it. I don't know if that counts as a fight. Let's hope it does. No, it does not. Oh, I really hope we unlock Ash's story. Here's where we found one of the lucky ones. Now, define lucky. Does he mean lucky because he has survived long enough to be eaten by the sword? Now that's just rude. I did not, in fact, consent to being yanked across a bridge without my uh, knowledge or permission. Listen, oh, I forgot I had that set to make them be my allies. Very amusing. Payback time. So yeah, it encourages you to uh, think about what your build is and prep something you reckon can fight six young ladies, but then you do not in fact fight six young ladies unless you are... They took a chunk out of the floor. Took it where though? Took it nowhere. It's just... it's just... no longer is what it is. Now five snapshots I can definitely fight. Back to the promenade. Still up. Your posters. Are they gonna fight me or...? Yeah, they're gonna fight me. So fighting a group of snapshots is actually quite difficult now that they've got this uh, upgrade. It makes uh, picturing what you're going to do pretty difficult, if you get what I mean. Anyway, um, once again I've run into this issue of seeing it be confirmed that they will die and then they simply don't. I still don't know what causes that. I don't know if that's a bug or if it's a design issue that I'm not understanding. Regardless, um, I won't know for sure until I actually get around to finishing Pyre so that I can play Hades, but um, I think that it's likely that they went into Hades with that same desire, the desire to solve that same design issue. Which isn't necessarily a problem in my opinion. I don't think it's bad for people to decide what things they like in your system and primarily use that thing instead of whatever it is you want them to use because there is actually a consistent problem with games designers of feeling like people don't play the game the way they're supposed to and that that says something about the game. I think that people will play the game the way that makes sense to them and I think that that should be supported and applauded. If you make a game that people insist on playing in a different way to the way you intended, that's as... Um, that just imply that just means you made a different game than the one you thought you were making and it, you should lean into what the players are doing with your game rather than uh, trying to force the issue and make them play your way even if that's not what actually suits the design of the game you made. This is because um, all directors and designers have huge egos and are, have a very hard time seeing past the end of their own noses. Uh, so, you know, I made it this way, therefore this is my grand design, therefore it must be the way it is, and anyone who does it differently should be forced to obey. I mean, I might be going a little bit far to say that all directors are inherently fascist, but let's, um, 
brush that aside and move on. You know, last time we were here, I knew it could be worse by a lot. I just wasn't quite sure how. Comfort in knowing makes things simple in a way. That's probably going to be it for today. I Little really fighting. need to find a save point. Um, at the very least, so that I can switch Asher back out to a different slot. But I can't use this one because it's acting like there's a still still a fight going on. So, regardless, we are at time, so I'm going to stop here and hope it works. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one tweet micro reviews. Or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.